Hi, I'm Dova. I'm gonna teach you how to pick the right rune on Jace. Now, before we start, this guide will be more about the thought process behind each rune and keystone. And it's not gonna be like, oh, they pick Malphites, then go for this rune. Uh, because one thing you have to understand is with Jace, there is no right answer to certain matchups. Uh, everyone has their own playstyle and their preference and their biases and their own strengths, of course. So this is more about helping you develop your own style. And by the way, there'll be a link in the description to the slides. Uh, so if you don't like to hear me yap, or if you just want to look up things yourself, uh, feel free. So let's get started with Conqueror. Uh, one of my favorite runes, uh, it's great into tanks, bruisers and battle mages. That's because it offers you sustained damage. It's the best choice for laning phase domination. It's by far the strongest uh, rune to pick for laning phase. It's a good rune to side lane and skirmish with. Uh, Precision tree offers great laning tools. So overall, this is a fantastic choice for laning phase. Uh, cons requires some form of sustain to be truly viable in forms of shield, tankiness or lifesteal. That is because you, you can't go full glass cannon on uh, Conqueror Jace, you'll just insta die before getting stacks. It's a very volatile rune, if you fall behind early or get camped heavily, this rune will suffer a lot, that is true. It is weaker into range comps and comps with heavy CC. So, it's a great rune to dominate laning phase with, but it does suffer against range comps with a lot of CC. Now, let's talk about the minor runes. Uh, Absorb Life is very weak in lane, but has decent sustain later on. Uh, Triumph can be very clutch, but is also kind of inconsistent sometimes. And Presence of Mind is just its a solid choice and it synergizes well with tier. Uh, I would usually go for Presence of Mind. Uh, Alacrity is great for more DPS and smoother auto deck poke. It is also fantastic uh, to just have an easier time last hitting. Uh, Legend Haste is a great source of ability haste. It's a fantastic choice into tanks and bruisers. And Bloodline is a very potent source of sustain in tougher matchups. Now, Kuriga kind of gets outperformed by other choices, so it's not really worth it in my opinion. Uh, Katon is a great pick when playing for poke, and Last Stand is a good pick when playing Bruiser Chase. Now let's talk about my favorite rune of all time. Uh, it's Face Rush. It is great against champs that heavily rely on their slows. It's a super useful escape tool. It's a godlike spacing tool, and it's extremely potent in team fights. This rune will make you feel like Faker. This rune will make you feel like a god. Uh, the things you can do with this rune, the skill ceiling, is absolutely insane. Uh, the cons, it doesn't provide any damage, so it's not great in hard winning lanes. Uh, this is for example not something you would want to pick into a Kassadin or any other hard winning lane. Uh, sorcery page can be rather underwhelming for landing phase, that is true. You will have a weak landing phase with face rush, but the trade-off is that it's a very versatile rune with great 1v9 potential and generally the strongest choice for team fighting. You get to go in, you get to go out, you get to start shit, you get to escape. It's a fantastic tool. Now let's talk about Sorcery Retreat. Uh, Nothing Orb is great as a life-saving tool in very tough matchups. If you play this into a LeBlanc or Syndra, it can save your life. Uh, Manaful Band is a very solid choice and it synergizes well with Manamune. And Nimbus Cloak is very situational. It is good with Ignite and Exhaust. Uh, you could run this into a champs like uh, Cassio. Where you ignite them and then you can like dodge their ulti or skill shots. Um, so yeah. Transcendence will generally be the most reliable choice. And it provides a great source of ability haste. Territory is not that useful unfortunately. It does work well with your gates. It does work well with ghost plates. But it's just not that useful. And uh, absolute focus is a great source of AD for poking. But it's bad if you fight a lot. Now, Scorch is not recommended against Dawn Shield users. Um, if you play into a champ that has Dawn Shield and Second Wind, you might accidentally even heal them with Scorch, so this is not something you want to do, but it provides decent extra damage against the rest. Uh, Watch Walking is great for mid lane Jace, it provides uh, decent value. It does come online every time you contest an objective, which is very useful, and it's also nice for roams. Gathering Storm is very reliable uh, as a source of AD, especially in lower elos where games tend to last longer. So this is like a great pick if you're on lower elos or you just want a very solid uh, scaling pick. Electrocute, a uh, very spicy rune. I like this one a lot. Uh, it's great for short trade patterns and one shots. This is the kind of rune you want to use against the likes of Yasuo for example. Where you don't want the extended trades if you're spaying with lethal tempo. You just want to go in, you want to proc it and you want to go out. It's also great for one shots. So if you are somebody that likes to play with oracles and likes to linger in brushes and tries to like one shot people. This is the rune for you. 
It is very simple and effective. Um, you go in, you proc it, you go out, it's off cooldown, you go in, you proc it, you go out. And Domination Page is very powerful with great minor runes. That's a great page in, in general. Now the cons, uh, it is weaker against tankier opponents. If you proc Electrocute against a bruiser or like a tank, it's not going to do much. Uh, it's not the greatest rune for team fighting as well. Like you proc it once and then it's on cooldown and then you can't really do much with it. And it is harder to proc against range champs, of course. Uh, it is a strong choice for quick and painful traits, uh, but it does suffer in extended traits and team fights. Um, so if you play against somebody who has Conqueror, you don't want to keep the traits too long because you will lose them. And this is just something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about Domination Tree, which is a very, very powerful tree. Uh, cheap shot. Decent source of damage if Melee Jace is not an option. Uh, when is Melee Jace not an option? Against champions that can cancel your melee Q. So basically, champions with heavy CC. Uh, Taste of Blood is an okay source of healing. Uh, works best against melee champs. Sudden Impact. Procs every time you use melee Q. Great for lane dominance. So every single time you get a melee Q off, you will proc Sudden Impact. It will be a nice chunk of extra true, net, uh, true damage. Um, this is fantastic in matchups like Yasuo, Kassadin, Katarina that can cancel your melee Q. Zombie Ward. Useful when playing with Red Trinkets. Otherwise, I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, Ghost Poro is useful when playing uh, top lane. It gives you a little bit more vision for a little longer. Uh, can be very important for top lane. For mid lane, not as much usually. And Ibo Collection is very simple. The most common option. Uh, you participate in kills, you get AD. Treasure Hunter. Great economical boost. Insane snowball potential. This one I would recommend more for mid laners. Um, but let's say you kill your mid laner. You roam bot. You get 2 assists. Or you get 2 kills. You will have 3 stacks in a very short amount of time. And it will just boost you like crazy. Relentless Hunter. Super useful when playing with Ignite. Great for roaming and split pushing. I wouldn't even say it's super useful with Ignite. I would say it's almost mandatory. Because when you play with Ignites, you will have no TP, obviously. So having the extra map presence, thanks to the move speed, will be very critical. Ultimate Hunter makes Jace feel a little bit more smooth and fluid, but it's not worth it over the other options. Um, Ultimate Hunter is kind of like for fun. It does make you feel smooth, um, but it's not worth it over the other two options. First Strike, great rune with crazy snowball potential as well. Uh, it's a solid source of extra income. Uh, Inspiration page offers a ton of economical value. Uh, very strong into squishy and ranged comps. Best to pick when melee form is not really viable. So, um, when do we pick this? We pick this if we want to play full difficulty. We pick this if we want to play for poke chase. And we pick this if we want to snowball like crazy. Cons, it's a pretty weak choice for laning phase. It is harder to proc and benefit from during laning phase against ranged champs. And it takes time to become efficient and useful. So this is a rune that will really shine in mid game. The TLDR, it's a great choice for full lethality and poke chase, uh, very weak early on for laning phase. Inspiration Tree uh, offers a ton of economical value that we can tap into, like we've mentioned before. Um, it starts off with Hextech Flash, can be a quirky way to gank and roam, but generally no. I recommend against Hextech Flash, not because it's terrible, but it's just the other two options are way better. Magical Footwear, great way to accelerate your first and second item purchase. But Cashback is a great way to accelerate your 3rd, 4th and 5th item purchase. It's simply put, Cashback outperforms Magical Footwear after you finish your 2nd item. And I honestly think over Cashback is overtuned at the moment, so just go for Cashback. Triple Tonic, a very interesting rune to be honest. Uh, gives you a bit of extra gold early on and some push power. But it also gives you a pretty potent AD buff around the time where other people have their ultimates. So definitely something to consider. Uh, Time Warp Tonic is a pretty good choice when you are going for refillable. Um, because essentially, instead of healing for 200 HP, you will heal for 280 HP. Cookies. A very clutch rune. It's great for baiting people. And it's also great against Ignite. Uh, the reason it's great against Ignite is because it will heal you for a chunk instantly. Uh, because it will give you bonus HP. And it's just great in uh, matchups where you need the extra sustain. Cosmic Insight. A good pick when playing with TP. It will shave off roughly a minute of its cooldown, which is going to be very useful, of course. Uh, approach Velocity helps catch up faster to champions that you jump on, but it's very situational. Um, I would generally recommend against this rune. It's not very useful. Sometimes it can help when you are like setting up a gank, but I would not recommend it. 
Uh, Jack of all trades. It's an okay choice for a bit of extra damage and ability haste. Uh, but don't try to reach the 10 stacks on it. Um, it's generally not worth it. Uh, grasp. Now, Grasp will be loved by some and hated by others. Um, it's just the type of room that you have to try out for yourself uh, to see if you like it. Uh, it's a solid pick into stalemate matchups like tanks. It's a great source of sustain. Uh, Resolve Page is absolutely godlike for laning phase, which is something we'll talk about in a bit. And you become rather tanky. So this is the kind of page you could run into tanks. Um, it's just a very easy way to heal up and um, scale up your HP against them. But the cons, uh, it provides less damage than other runes, of course. It does suffer against range champs and comps. And generally, you will have less kill pressure in lane with Grasp. Uh, TLDR, very beginner friendly rune, strong situational pick for Bruiser Jace, suffers against range. Resolve Tree, uh, super potent for landing phase, um, very safe, very easy to play with, and provides a lot of value. Uh, we start off with Demolish, fantastic for split pushing and taking plates. Uh, this is generally almost always the rune you want to take if you play with Resolve. Um, Font of Life, your melee Q heals you a bit, not worth it over Demolish, again. The melee Q healing is a bit nice, you heal your allies as well, but it's not worth it compared to Demolish. And uh, Shield Bash, uh, no. Just, no guys, it's not worth it. Uh, conditioning will give you a bit of extra resistance later on. Uh, it's not really worth it though, it's very negligible. Uh, Second Wind is fantastic in lanes with frequent traits and uh, spells that have damage over time effects. Uh, bomb Plating is a strong choice against melee champs and assassins. Especially if they do not have ranged abilities that can easily proc uh, your Bomb Plating. So for example, this is fantastic into Riven or even Fiora. Uh, Overgrowth, probably the most common pick I would recommend, uh, gives a decent HP, especially useful against champions that spawn minions. So if you go Overgrowth into a champion like Mazaha, <laughs> you're gonna have a very good time. Revitalize, uh, really worth it, very very situational. You could maybe go for it if you have Enchanter support and Iron, Iron Jungle for example, but uh, it's very rarely worth it. And Unflinching, not very useful unfortunately, very situational against champions with point and click CC. You could maybe think about running this into champions like Lissandra uh, that want to like CC you a lot. Um, it can help, but I think Overgrowth is the most solid choice. Now I've given you a lot of info, <laughs> I've blasted your brain, uh, my apologies, but now it's up to you to try out these different runes and see which ones you like, which one suits your playstyle. At the end of the day, it will always be a combination of your comp, your playstyle and enemy comp um, that will define your runes and you will simply have to experiment. I hope this video helped. Uh, there's more content and more guides coming soon. I was very tired in this video. Like I am very exhausted and tired. Uh, so hopefully it's not too bad in terms of energy. But yeah, I hope the info was useful and uh, take care guys, bye bye. Oh yeah, and of course uh, subscribe and uh, follow me on Twitch. I stream almost every day. And uh, like I said, a lot of good content is coming. So don't Our miss it.